Greetings, my name is Reverend Dr. Danny Anthony Everett. Please join me on my journey to becoming Dr. Everett. I completed my Doctor of Ministry in Prophetic Preaching and Praxis as a Cummings Walker Fellow from United Theological Seminary in May of 2020. My research illuminates how the praxis of prophetic activism through culturally based church programs in partnership with middle schools increases academic achievement for African-American male students in my thesis entitled, Prophetic Activism, Increasing the Academic Achievement Among, among Low-Performing African-American Male Students at Mary B. Martin School. Why did you decide to pursue a doctorate degree? I decided to pursue a dream. Uh, my great-grandfather, great-grandparents, the Reverend George Harvey and Mary Everett, lived in Jackson, Mississippi in the early 1900s. They had a family of seven children of whom, of whom my grandfather, Joseph Henry Everett Sr. was a sibling and my father was named after him. My great grandfather was a brick mason as it was verbally told to my brother, Dwayne and I by my great aunt, Mrs. Maude Lewis. Before 23andMe and AfricanAncestry.com existed, my brother and I decided to go to the National Archives and research what Aunt Maud had told us about her father, Reverend Everett. We looked at census records from Hines County, Mississippi, and found it to be documented that Reverend Everett was a brick mason. To our surprise, all of our great-grandfather's neighbors, one generation removed from chattel slavery, were sharecroppers. We thought that this was very powerful, that our great-grandfather was a brick mason in the early 1900s and not a sharecropper. Aunt Maud shared with us that in the 1930s, during the depression, Reverend Everett moved his entire family from Mississippi to Washington, DC, so that he could work on the development of government buildings in the nation's capital. I don't know which buildings my great grandfather worked on, but I know he had hopes and aspirations and dreams for his family. One of his dreams was that his progeny would become doctors who would serve humanity. My brother and I were determined to manifest his dream in our lives. What were some of the challenges you experienced in your work-life balance? Now, some of the challenges I experienced in my work-life balance were, were very interesting. I, I live in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, I started out my uh, journey in while I was in Lexington. And of course, the school is in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, but, you know, the way that it's set up, you're, you're there um, maybe once or twice during the semester for a week. And so I started in Lexington, Kentucky, started in one um, context, one uh, school here in Lexington. Uh, but I was selected to be uh, the pastor of a church in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm a United Methodist ordained elder. And so um, I was selected, it was a national search and I was selected to go to University Circle United Methodist Church up in Cleveland, Ohio. And so um, I had to make that transition. Um, my wife is a professor at the University of Kentucky and she's tenured, so she wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> so, um, you know, we had to make that, that life transition of me going back and forth you know over a period of time and then um being there in a new context i had to change the context from which i was working in um, with this doctor of ministry program and so that context no longer was the windburn uh, community in lexington but it became the um, um the uh university circle and Huff neighborhood in Cleveland, Ohio. Describe your support system along the journey. I had a wonderful support system. And as I, I mentioned, my wife, she's a professor, Professor, she's Dr. Angelique Play Everett. And she was the greatest support for me. You know, having gone through the process to obtain her Doctor of Musical Arts degree, she encouraged me that I can do this work. And so it's wonderful when you have a partner there that's saying, hey, you know, I've done it. I know you can do it. 
and it's a little pressure as well <laughs> but uh it's, it is wonderful to have that also my brother his mother-in-law dr barbara miles served as my editor and a subject matter expert on education and so as i was writing she's reviewing my writings and helping me to edit and she's um providing also content to me that says okay you want to um uh, focus on this in a, in a different way because she comes from the education um field education leadership and um it was very important for me to have that that input how challenging if at all was it to write your dissertation in the dissertation <laughs> It wasn't in the writing. Um, the writing, you know, I've, I've always been a decent writer. I had an uncle who, who taught me early on how to write well. The problem was putting everything in the format that is required by the seminary. And in a candidacy review, they're looking at this document, the correct citations, you don't have um, everything in, in the way that it's supposed to be it gets rejected. Uh, but the experts have already provided the data that's out there, you know? So it's, 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 it's like humbling yourself. That's the major part of, of this writing. Humbling yourself to follow the, the um, outline that they have for you in terms of the writing. And then as well, uh, humbling yourself to realize that you don't know anything. But I know one thing that I've learned, and my wife has already said in plenty of times, that when you get a doctorate degree, you realize how much you don't know. If you could describe your doctoral journey in one word, what would that word be? If I could describe my doctoral journey in one word, um, I, would, I would have to say transformational. I think that the journey has been transforming for me and it, it, it should be for anyone. If it's not transforming, then, you know, what are you doing? You know, that, that challenge there to um, go beyond who you already are. You might be establishing your career and what have you and already have ideas of what it is that's important to you, but then um, to grow from that, to be able to um, to learn beyond that, you know, is powerful. How has BDN helped you personally or professionally? So um, the Black Doctoral Network, um, I didn't learn about it until I was in the program itself. And so what it gave me was a sense of hope that I can make it through this because others are making it through. And, and the hope also was in that, you know, um, we all are going through the process. You know, you have your PhD, I have my doctorate in ministry. It's not exactly the same, but we're both going through this process of becoming doctors in our respective fields. And so it's so important um, to have that, that, um, um, that community, you know, and a black community at that, that's, that's what's powerful. Having that black community that says, okay, you know, we're going to do this, you know, <laughs> it's not, it's not about, you know, can we do this or are we capable and all it's about, no, we, we there are so many others doing this and we're doing this but it also gives us the, the opportunity to present and to share our knowledge and then also learn from others thank you for joining us on this edition of the becoming doctor podcast we'll see you next time